It's World Facilities Management Day with the theme, Standing Tall Beyond the Pandemic. The International Facility Management Association in Nigeria is using this opportunity to raise awareness on the gap in maintenance culture of facilities in the country. Jacinta Obuku tells us more. The gathering of these professionals, experts in the field of architecture and environment is to address the loopholes in facility management with the theme celebrating FM standing tall beyond the pandemic which borders on the renewed importance that should be placed on human health and safety coupled with building sustainability and resilience. The Lagos State Safety Commission is charged with the mandate of ensuring the safety and health of Lagosians and we see facility managers as partners in progress in this drive. There is a need for us to incorporate and uh, bring in, at the point of inception, experts in facility management that will also help, you know, when we are generating and formulating design. We cannot continue to design around our failures. When you want to design a space, you are recommending 20-story building to say, where is electricity to operate the lifts? And I said, are we going to be like this forever? It's so sad that in this part of the world, in Nigeria, our maintenance culture is zero. And you and I are to blame. Part of the event was a panel section where the vital work of facilities manager, frontline workers were recognized during the heat of the pandemic. Facility managers, architects, engineers, plumbers are all frontline workers. I mean, mostly when you hear about COVID, all you heard about was the doctors, the nurses, but trust me, we had cleaners there every day. We had electricians, we had plumbers, architects, we were all at the forefront of this pandemic. The panelists also gave a way forward in tackling the issues of maintenance culture of facility management. When you're talking of maintaining the building, you don't get the materials, you don't get a replacement. When we're specifying things or when we're using any material, let's always think of local content. No one wants to do any sort of maintenance until it becomes a problem. You know, no one wants to clean the gutter until the gutter is clogged. You increase the lifespan of the building if you do continuous maintenance. Yes, maintenance culture, not too good. But again, there's a ray of hope. There's a slight element of light at the end of the tunnel because a lot is happening and a lot will continue to happen. And for us in IFMA, we're not only really committed to ensure that um, this toga is taken away through a renewed purpose, which speaks to capacity building. The thrust here is that the notion that bad maintenance culture should be treated as myth and energies should be channeled towards building a good maintenance culture. Jacinta Ubuku reporting for PLOS TV Africa. Thanks to Jacinta Obuku for that. And now joining us, we have um, Sashegun Adebayo, the President, International Facilities Management Association. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Thank you for Good having morning. me. Good morning. Good morning. Let's start by talking about what exactly uh, facility management is all about. Um, a lot of people may not be familiar with the whole, with the word, with the terms. Um, so what is it about and in what ways do we fall short mostly? Thank you for having me. Um, it's World Facility Management Day and... Um, we're here to also see how much we could also enhance the advocacy around what facility management is all about. And that question is actually very apt. Facility management, it's um, a process that integrates people, technology, and places together and ensure that you have a safe, conducive, and a healthy environment where you work, where you recreate. I mean, your studio is also a facility. So it's about integrating people, places, using technology, innovation, to ensure that people that work in that environment are not only safe, but it's also conducive and productive for them to work. Okay, I was asking, you know, in what ways do we fall short mostly um, here in Nigeria? Uh, clearly, um, I mean, you don't have to overflog the fact that um, our culture around maintenance, which speaks to management of facility, needs improvement, no doubt. And then... Um, a lot has happened in the past, and um, clearly is a, is a fact that we fall short in keeping our environment very clean, better. But the point is that um, 
getting better in the areas of maintenance culture, for me, is not a sprint, it's a marathon. So it's a continual exercise. And that's why for us in IFMA Nigerian chapter, we take it upon ourselves to ensure that everyone takes responsibility of your immediate space. I mean, if you are conscious of your environment, <coughs> excuse me, and you know that um, some things are not in order. For, for example, you have cable flying around in an environment. What it means is that there's an hazard that could cause an injury to the user of the space. So as a matter of fact, everyone takes responsibility of the space and ensure that um, space is conducive to work. But again, as a facility manager, you are a professional and you understand what is expected of you. So you need to exhibit that care, that professionalism in you. And in getting that done, you must follow some lay down principles. That also speaks to global best practice. For example, if my Nigerian chapter, through our connection with IFMA Houston, we have 11 core competencies in facility management, which goes beyond um, just mere taking care of. I mean, it speaks to technology, yeah. it speaks to leadership, it speaks to operations and maintenance, it speaks to communication, it speaks to health and safety of the environment. So those are the core things that will guide you to ensure that you have a, an excellent facility management and built environment. All right, so Mr. Adibayo, we know that um, facilities refers to places like our homes, our offices, airports, the malls. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, we're, we're still in the COVID-19 pandemic, but during that onset from around March 2020, we know that most of these facilities had to be shut down. What were the challenges that facility managers faced? And even till now, what are the challenges they're facing? And in the light of the theme of, uh, you know, the World Facility Management Day, which is standing tall beyond the pandemic, what really is the future of facility management in the country? Okay, um, you see, the COVID-19 pandemic came in like a TV in the night and clearly affected our ways of life. I think that's what took us to the fact that we are all in a new normal. Now, so if you look at the facility and um, Going by the effect or the impact of COVID-19, activities dropped. So you have a lot of people out of job. But beyond that, because the facility also needs to be keep running, maybe at a low space now, you have some element of people that works in the same facility. So a mall, for example, needs to be secured. So you still have a security guard there. That's also part of facility management. Upon closure of those facilities, and there is need for us to also reopen, you need to do a lot of cleaning, comprehensive, hardcore, intensive cleaning in this case. So you may not leave the entire facility without activity, but you need to do some periodic cleaning in those facilities. So activities drop for facility managers, less income, no, not much money as it were. But again, there are some, what I call, element of work to be done to keep the facility up and running. So no doubt, activities dropped because no more traffic going to the mall, for example. But you still have some element of people staying in that facility to keep it, you know, in that state you, you have it due to the, due to the pandemic. And um, you see, I would say it's a deferred glory, as it were, for any facility manager to take a break at this point in time and also get ourselves ready to take up the mantle whenever we have a full blur of activities. But most of the facility managers who are quite um, proactive, what we did was to activate one critical element of the core competence, okay. which is called business continuity and emergency preparedness. Mm. As a professional, that has to be around you because emergency won't tell you when it's going to happen. Yeah. But we have a proper structure to be able to activate that. And I think that's what most of the professional facility managers activated. How did they, how did they activate that specifically? It's just application of that principle. Of course, business couldn't continue. So there are steps that you need to take when business is shutting down. Such as? Okay, the first step is to activate your plan around emergency preparedness, because there's connection. Business cannot continue due to emergency. So because you are prepared for emergency, you activate level one, level two, level three. The first level of that should be communication to the top hierarchy. That in view of this emergency, we can't continue the way we do before. So you get your stakeholders and communicate to them, this is the situation and this is the way to go. 
So you determine who comes to work, who doesn't come to work. You determine your operating hours, and so on and so forth. So that will help you to actually simulate that before you actually activate. And clearly, you will be able to now get the entire place and every stakeholders within or without to understand that this is the situation of the facility and this is the way to go about it. I'm sure this, you know, um, covers both big, you know, large industries and, you know, medium and small scale in, um, you know, enterprises. I mean, clearly it does because facility management is more about built environment. Hmm. It doesn't matter whether it's church, whether it's stadium, whether it's cinema or what have you. But again, you need to also apply them in line with the size and the scope of your operations. What's the message from IFMA um, as this day has been celebrated? Uh, the message, message is simply sustainability and then um, sustainability through resilience. I mean, we are steadily getting out of COVID-19 pandemic, and that's why we're saying that we want to celebrate everyone that have been part of it. And again, too bad we are now having what I call a resurgence in view of the pronouncements of the Federal Advisory Committee. So the message is that um, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are out, and we should just believe that um, this will be a thing of the past, and we continue to strengthen our capacity to ensure that um, we survive this time. Mm. So I want us to quickly talk about facility management in line with, you know, maintenance culture and how to avoid building collapse. Okay, facility management, maintenance culture, directly related. So if you manage your facility properly, you do a lot of good to that facility. For example, you enhance the value. If you don't have that culture, you are doing a disservice or a damage to your facility. So I've been issue, you need to have that sense of responsibility around maintenance culture. Now, facility management is just is a platform to ensure that maintenance culture is not only implemented, but it's also sustained as it were. Now, if you don't maintain an asset, definitely it loses value. Now, if you look at a structure, for example, a building that is not properly maintained in line with the expected activities then that facility will have a challenge. Okay, now because it's not properly built, doesn't mean you're not managing that facility properly. But what you need to do is that you must maintain the physical asset, which is the building, properly and effectively well. Now, building collapse has to do with the way it is structured, the way it's constructed. And that's why we, on our path, we are so, I mean, we are so committed to the fact that we would like every player in that industry to bring facility managers into a project team from the beginning. It's purely sustainability. Because in the course of you building that facility, what you do is that it's cost effective for you to bring in a facility manager who tells you the type of materials from experience. Because when you build, you leave the site for a facility manager to handle. And if it's not part of you from inception, and it was a highlight of what we did discuss yesterday, and that's why I think we have an architect as our keynote speaker who spoke to the fact that it's important that we all work together in that industry yeah. to ensure sustainable okay. and environment. So facility managers are more important than we might actually I think. mean, clearly you need to have us, as you, from, even from, from this inception, okay. so that we'll be all able right. to manage when you leave the site. Right. So no. today is World Facility Management Day, and I did some funding on how to celebrate facility management, facility managers. And then some of the things I, I, I came up with was that you need to you know, find out who the facility manager is in your favorite spot, the place you love to go, the malls you love to visit. Find out who the facility manager is, appreciate them, recognize them. Uh, isn't that so? Or do you have more to add? Yes, I mean, you are, you, are very, you are very correct in that regard. And again, maybe we should also speak to the fact that advocacy. I mean, yeah. everyone should be responsible for your immediate space. Yes. In Absolutely. that case, we, could, we take it beyond the professionals. Fantastic. Right. Thank, Thank, you, very Thank much. you so much, uh, President IFMA, Nigeria Chapter. Thank you for, Thank having you for speaking me. with us and uh, looking forward to seeing you again. Okay. Thank you for having me. All right. This is uh, where we wrap up, of course, uh, the breakfast for today. Thank you so much for starting our Wednesday with us. Uh, happy uh, Ramadan. I yes, believe. in advance. And uh, <laughs> uh, we wish you, of or course, happy uh, Eid al Fitri celebration tomorrow. And we wish you a, a very, very brilliant uh, day ahead. If you missed out on any of the discussions we had, remember to join us on our social media platforms. It's simply at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and our YouTube channel. I am Osao Gi Ogbon. And I am Aneta Felix. Bye bye.